Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up an Angular application with Firebase and how to set up Google authentication with it. Let's start off by creating an Angular application. To do this, we'll write ng new and write the name of the Angular application. Here I'm naming it FireAuth. Let's select SCSS. In the meanwhile, let's go to the Firebase console. Let's click on add project. Let's add the name of the project. I'll name it FireAuth. And continue. I'll just turn off analytics for this. Let's wait while the project is getting created. The project has initialized successfully. We'll now add Angular Fire to this repo. Let's move inside the folder. To add Angular file, we'll use the command ng add at the rate of Angular slash fire. You can skip the analytics or you can agree to it, whichever that you want. Press Y. Once the project is created, go inside the project, go to the authentication section on the left hand side and click on get started in the top and click on Google. Firebase gives you multiple ways to select different providers for your authentication. After clicking on Google, enable it, select a support email and click on save. In Angular Fire, already have Firebase CLI configured. You can choose your email and directly select the project from here. The benefit that you'll get is all of your environment variables will get automatically configured. I can select the project name FireAuth from here and click on enter. This will populate all of my environment variables with the environment variable. Now you have to give a name to the application. We'll call it Fire Auth Web App. Now go inside source environments and you can see all of the keys directly inside the environment file. It has been configured by the Firebase CLI. If you haven't logged in into the Firebase CLI, you can go to project settings and get the keys for it directly from under project settings. Like here, you can see under project settings, we have the Fire, Fire Web App if, uh, and you can get the Firebase config from here. If this is not present, you can add an application, create a web app from here. And after registering your app, you'll get the credentials directly. Let's run this application to see if it works. One of the things that you'll see is provide Firebase app, provide auth. This is written. Let's remove this auth. We have an alternate way to, uh, to make things easier for us in initializing the Angular application. After removing of the lines, We can import the Angular Fire module and use initialize app with the environment Firebase variable to initialize our application with the Firebase credentials. To import it, you can get it from inside at the rate of Angular Fire slash compat and write Angular Fire module. We also need another module, which is the Angular Fire Auth module. We'll set up a button with a click handler and we'll create an equivalent method for it inside the component TS file. We'll create a constructor inside that we'll add the angular fire auth module. Inside on sign in click, we'll add this angular auth that sign in with pop up. 
and inside that we'll pass the Google Auth provider. To get the Google Auth provider, we can get it from inside Firebase. We'll add a then block to this. Then block will make sure that our promise get executed and it will also console log that we have signed in successfully. And we add a cache block just in case that if we hit an error, we'll get to see what error we have hit inside the console. Once this is done, let's open up the application and let's click on sign in with Google. You'll see a pop-up open up, which will prompt you to log into the application via your email. To get the details of the logged in user, you can use user dollar and you can use angular auth and get the auth state. We'll add a map to the auth state. The reasoning behind this is auth state directly gives you if the user is present or not, but that is not enough for us. We need an object inside which the auth state should be represented. Otherwise, you won't be able to tell if the Firebase is loading the user, if the user is loaded or the user is not loaded. You also need the loading state along with the sign, signed out state and the sign in state. For this, we'll use this kind of map. We'll add a ng container with the ng of the user. Inside that, we'll add a sign out button if the user is already signed in. And uh, we'll check the object inside you, the user user dollar to see if the user is already present. If it's null, it means that the user is already signed in. If it's the user is not signed in, that would be the else case. And we'll put up an ng template corresponding to that. If the use if the promise has not re the resolved yet, it'll uh, if the observable has not resolved yet, we'll get the loading state, which is represented as thus. Now, as you see, if I reload the page, first I get uh, loading. If I click on sign in with Google, I can click on one of one of my accounts and I can log in. And if I click on sign out, it will log me out. Next thing we'll cover is how to protect certain routes one year, so once you're signed in with Firebase Auth. You don't want anyone basically being able to access your application, even if they are not even they if they haven't signed up or signed in into your application correct to do this we'll set up our auth guard to add auth guard let's go to app routing ts inside this let's create a path for a component let's assume that part is called protected corresponding to that maybe you have a component let's give a name to this component let's just call it protected component and let's add the and can activate array where you pass in all of your guards. We'll use Angular Fire auth guard, which will import from Angular Fire. And after that, you can also get this pipe, which is redirect unauthorized to login. Over there, you can define the path where you want to redirect the user if they're not logged in. You pass it inside the data property and put it inside the auth guard pipe property. This way, it will always get the user, if they try to access this protected route, they'll get redirected to this login page if they are not logged in. Thank you.